minus 20 seconds. Let's just keep honest, people honest. Marie Teresa. Daddy is RV. Elena Sandovici. Lauren Luna. Rodney D. Butler. Hugo Perez. Amy Cummins. Flux the artist. Lex Simone. Brandy Unz. Amy Malkin. Jean Barron. Teresa L. Staley. And Monique LaRue. We all had hopes for a good 2020, but no one could have imagined what 2020 had in store for us. January 20th of 2020 was the first reported case of COVID-19 in the United States. The U.S. has begun screening airline passengers arriving from the city of Wuhan in China to detect symptoms of a new respiratory virus. March 11th, 2020, school closures begin and the Houston Livestock and Rodeo is canceled, which hit really hard for the local Houston economy. An estimated 227 million economic loss for the city and the state. We had been asking all morning long, why now? What is the reason now? And we heard today it's because this contact, this man in Montgomery County just recently apparently infected and confirmed tested with the coronavirus, went to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Barbecue Cook-Off on February 28th. Art galleries, museums, and art studios begin to close doors. Art shows are postponed or either just straight up canceled. Along with the Tokyo Olympics, the NBA, NASCAR, South by Southwest, and then millions of businesses worldwide. Everything was shutting down and no one had time to prepare. And then I guess the universe decided to cancel us. Ooh, girl. <laughs> March 13th, 2020. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. March 24th, 2020. Harris County issues, in addition to self-quarantine, a stay-home, work-safe order. Face masks are now required by law. And travel throughout the city and country has been limited and at this point, and in some places, restricted. And then this weird thing with panic buying and toilet paper happened. The end of the line for the toilet paper and paper towels is here. Unemployment was through the roof and those trying to file for it. The stock market plummeted. <laughs> And as of April 2020, the U.S. unemployment rate reached 14.7%. Then some people got really upset about wearing masks. And then, yikes. May 25th, 2020, George Floyd is murdered by a Minneapolis police officer while in custody. George Floyd was a Houston native and did music with the famous DJ Screw. This hit home for a lot of Houstonians and the culture of Houston and our art community. Racial tensions continue to divide the country. Protests turned into riots. 
so bad that it started to take over and leak into the nation and the rest of the world, even in France. What's up, y'all? I'm Monique LaRue, and I'm excited to be doing this docuseries. The cool thing about this docuseries is that I actually got to meet all these artists during different points of my own art career, which really started back in 2016 here at Houston. Because of these artists and meeting them along the way, I'm able to still be here alongside them and manage this mess and this global crisis of COVID-19 and everything else that's going on that's just terrible in 2020. So during this series, you won't see too much of me because I'll be behind the camera. I'll be filming it, directing it, and a few other things, also narrating it as well. But we still want to practice social distancing and keeping everyone safe, even with trying to do this project. We want to share this story and share this history and let you guys get to know how these artists are doing, which I think is a cool story to tell. So like I said, I got started back in 2016. And I want to introduce you guys and tell you how I met Mary Teresa of Emmett's Art. So I moved back to Houston in 2016 and I had my sights set on starting an art career. I also have a younger cousin. Her name is Nova, AKA Nova Kane. She does some really cool art. And she was doing a show downtown called Pancakes and Booze. I went to the show downtown at a venue called Warehouse Live. That night, while seeing my cousin display her art, was just so inspiring to see. So many different styles, so many different artists, so much diversity in art. In a sense, my cousin was really my first inspiration to me wanting to get started out here on the Houston art scene. But it was also that night I met Mary Teresa. I am Marie Teresa. I am the founder of Immense Art, which is an organization that basically helps artists create and establish who they are. Um, I am also an artist that designs and really digs deep into who I am and expresses that through my art. Um, I'm a designer, graphic design, various different aspects. I am Garments and I am Mag. I actually came from Emmett's Art deciding to assist artists in expanding their, um, I guess, reach. And I'm here today to speak on everything that we do and also how COVID is affecting us in the process of helping artists, being an artist, and doing what artists do. Speaking of what artists do, we ended up taking a field trip to go visit Johnsky in the art park in Third Ward. Hey, what's good with it? I see y'all living up the place. What's going on? I said, I see y'all liven up the place a little bit. Yeah, you know, we doing our thing, maintaining. You know, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's the art park. How facts, you doing? Facts. How you doing? You know, it's this the art park. Room. It's on its creations. You know what we do. We, 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 we've been established for about four years. Everybody eat, but it's all about being smart about it and being a collective, not just a, right. just like entities. Because that's what they do with politics. Mm -hmm. But if we come as a collective and association, we find ourselves unified and um, profitable. Right. That's, and I'm not talking about no money. Then we then there's a value in the collective of it all. Yeah. I think it's no doubt that Houston artists are dedicated to their craft and what they do. Even amid COVID-19, we're trying to focus on what we have and unified rather than what we just lost. How do you feel your art and your organization impacts the Houston art community? For one, I can say that as a community of artists, we make art known to those who don't normally experience it. Um, Emmett's Art is not just an art organization that's centered around art. It's an art organization that imp 
imparts the art into the community. Um, we literally gather artists of all different creeds, different kinds, different races, and religions, and literally go out into the community and provide it for people. We put it in um, in um, gardens. We go out and take it to parks. We take it to people that don't normally experience it. We bring it to veterans. We discuss art in a way that most people are like, oh, well, I didn't know that was art. A lot of times you don't recognize that signs and images that you see all the time are art that different artists put together, and that's what Emmett's art is. So how do you feel about being an artist during COVID-19 and the current events of 2020 so far? Um, interesting enough, the way that we set up our, as an artist, I feel as though, as I set up as an artist, I feel as though COVID-19 is a very drastic change for society. Um, but as an artist, I've been prepared for it my whole life. I've, I've literally created art and I've designed things, and it has been, it hasn't really been so interactive that it's personal space, um, you know, like this, that it's disturbing anybody's personal space. Um, but I do see the difference in the versatility of people coming out to my events or people, me setting up events now to where it used to be people coming out, now it's me setting out virtual or digital platforms for people to be a part and not so much direct interaction. So I guess that's the difference that I see in COVID. So, you know, to me, I'm just like, I already do this every day anyway. I don't interact with many people. I do create and I do allow people to see the different things that we do and interact with that. But for the most part, it's been quite interesting as a whole for society. Go for it. Um, what the world needs now is really understanding understanding of your craft, understanding of yourself, and understanding of how that interacts with one another. Um, a lot of times we each try to do things on our own and say, I can do this all by myself, but recognizing that if you do it together, though it ha doesn't have to be as close as COVID won't allow us to be, if you do it together, it will be way 10 times greater than you could have ever done it by yourself. Not to say that there aren't things that you can't do by yourself, but unity and understanding of how to do that is the key that we need more of. Trust me. Um, so one of the things that I would honestly leave with the world is at the end of the day, it's about you being who you are. It's not about what everybody else thinks that you are. It's not about what everybody else says that you have to be. All you can be is you. And if you are never able to truly be you. The world may never experience that truth. The world may, ever, may never get to know what you were supposed to give it if you can't be you. So at the end of the day, I'm always telling people to declare the truth. Be who you want to be. Have that vision and go after it. Because that's what matters and that's what counts. Okay. I had to be real on that one. Over the next year or so, I started doing pop-up shows with my cousin Nova. Then I started volunteering with Mary and the Emmett's Art Organization. But who knew at the same venue, maybe a year later, that I'd meet this next artist that I can't wait for you guys to meet.